Reynolds back in a hurry. Reynolds to the hole. Yeah, we're trying to get free shoot scores. To keep the Grand Barry on target. Lundy to the house. Touchdown, Virginia. Cavalier Sports Weekly is presented by the Virginia Lottery, where all profits benefit Virginia's public schools grades K-12. through Buy clean, safe, reliable propane. Propane, exceptional energy. And brought to you in part by the Virginia Athletics Foundation, dedicated to providing scholarship, operational, and facility support for the Virginia Athletics Program. On this edition of Cavalier Sports Weekly, presented by the Virginia Lottery. It's a 200-acre farm, and... Uh, this is it. You see them in there, and then I'm going to be part of that. That's, that's something special. Anderson the catch. And then they just kind of throw up the boys in this room. Welcome to Cavalier Sports Weekly. My name is the Brookie Show Ferguson, number 66 on the football team. I am proud to be hosting this season's first edition of Cavalier Sports Weekly. Our show is packed with highlights from our Western Michigan game, as well as a trip to Brennan Schmidt's farm in Maryland. But first, here's our play of the week. The play of the week is brought to you by SunTrust Mortgage. We make the American dream come true every day. Virginia goes too wide. Marcus Higgins under center with one running back. The play fake and Higgins to throw. Higgins looking deep. He's got a man. Anderson makes the catch. 20, 15, 10 to the five-yard line. Not bad. 58 yards to start the game. I was excited about it. Coach let us know that we was going to be going outside for his play like a couple days ago. So I've just been thinking about making that big play. Right, Higgins to throw. Higgins now will run out of the pocket. And he throws it downfield, looking deep for Ottawa. Ottawa comes to get it to catch, 32-yard line. Boy, did Ottawa play that absolutely perfectly. Marcus put it up there for me. I beat my man, and it was a big game. I had a deep desire inside just, just to get back in and make plays. You know, and I got the opportunity tonight. I'm thankful for it. What a great start for the 2005 football season. I was really excited after it, and I hope it's tell the things to come. And we'll be right back with more highlights on Cavaliers Sports Weekly. Welcome back to the show. Scott Stadium was rocking Saturday night as we kicked off the 2005 season against Western Michigan. Let's take a look at the game story. For on-demand Virginia football video highlights, visit virginiasportstv.com. It's an absolute picture-perfect night for University of Virginia football as the Cavaliers open the 116th season of competition. This is one of Algro's youngest teams as the Cavaliers return 12 starters. Tonight, it's the Broncos of Western Michigan in the second meeting ever as the Cavaliers hope to kick off the campaign with a victory. Right to left from the far side, Ashmark. The play fake and Hagen's to throw. Hagen's looking deep. He's got a man. Anderson makes the catch. 20, 15, 10 to the five-yard line. The third down goal, two-yard line. Play fake. Hagen's rolls right. Hagen's wants to throw. Hagen's going to try to turn the corner wide open. Touchdown. He got it to Tom Santee. Santee was in the back of the end zone. Touchdown, Cav. Moss under center. Two receivers near side is right. And a pressure. Oh, ball. Drop ball on the ground. Cavs going after it. Did they get it? I think so. 41-yard line. The turnover. Higgins. Play fake. Looks to throw. Looks deep. Near side. Dayon Williams. The catch. Seven-yard line. Out of bounds at the two. 39 yards to Dayon near side. For the kind of camp that Dayon's had, um, 
You know, he carried it over into the game. It really showed. It really showed. It, you know, I don't know how many catches he had, but he had some excellent plays for us and really ran the route exactly as it had to be run on the long vertical throw that he, that he was able to go out and run down. I, I thought he did a real good job. Santee will be in motion right. They're going to roll that side again. Higgins, Biscuit will tuck. Touchdown, Marcus Higgins, right side. I thought Marcus did a terrific job with his team today. Um, he got the ball up the field. Um, Accurately and for big plays that gave us a lot of momentum and a lot of confidence early in the game. They're trying to hide Jennings just a little bit. Haas throws far side, deep. Cavaliers play it, and it's going to be intercepted and picked off. The Cavs got it. Nate Lyles jumps up to make the play. It was a tough game, and you got to ha- hats off to Western Michigan. They they played a tough game, and we responded, though, and that, that was what I was really proud about of my teammate. Cavs have a 27-yard line. First down. Hagans, the blitz, got rid of the ball. He got hit to Johnson. Johnson near side. Knocked out of bounds inside the 20 and down to the 17 by Lois Delmas. It'll be Sandy in motion to the near side for Biscuit. Hands off Johnson. Johnson wants the extra blocker. Five-yard line. Goal line. Touchdown. A little counter play to Michael Johnson, near side, touchdown Virginia. 52 seconds to play. A 24-9 Virginia lead. Higgins, five-step drop again. Oh, look out, look picked out. off and we're going the other way. Intercepted, 30, 25, 20, 10, 5, touchdown. Intercepted by C.J. Wilson, the free safety. And Western Michigan celebrating like crazy. They're down nine. He knew immediately what had happened on it. And, uh, this is the case in that drive. Pretty, pretty much the same coverage as Pat Where that guy kept seeing stuff coming from the other area. He did a real good job kind of baiting him into the throw. Once he baited him into the throw, he jumped it and so. Halftime stats. Fourth and four, 31. Haas to throw. He's got his tight end. Ledbetter's going to be hit. He does not get it. Nailed at the 30-yard line. Ledbetter the tight end. Jermaine Dias was one of them who got there. I think the defense effort was great tonight. You know, we've been in some situations where we were out on the field for a long time. I think we responded pretty good tonight. Third and eight, 44-yard line. Pro set. Here comes the blitz from the outside. Hagens is going to be hit, but he got away. Hagens is going to run. 45 to the 50. Hagens dies. 45 to the stripe and got the first down. Virginia with a five-point lead. Second and short. They're going to do it on the ground. Cedric Pierman a cut. Great cut. 30, 25. Cedric Pierman to the 22. First down and 13 yards from the redshirt freshman. 24-19. The Cavs have second down. Five and a half. Short side of the field. Pierman hurdles. 15. And he just runs over a man. The crowd falling in love with him. Pierman alone. Tailback. Too tight and too wide. They're going to give it to Cedric. Pierman to the goal line. He's in. Touchdown. Very positive breaking for him. You can see that he's got a good amount of firepower, and he's certainly got sufficient toughness to go with it, too. It's a great individual effort from the offense, you know. Uh, just coming out, you know, uh, I think it's uh, about seven minutes left on the clock, and uh, we uh, put together a good drive, and offense came together, and I think it was just a, a great team win today. Game almost goes down to the wire. Pass the deep drop, seven steps, and he's going to be sacked by Parham. Kai Parham wraps him up back at the 38-yard line, a big sack for Kai. The only statistic that we look at on defense is points allowed. Okay? And on, on defense, okay, we allowed 12 points. That, that's a pretty darn good night. Final stats. You know, a lot of people jump to conclusions when you look at a score of a game and whatnot, but it's the first game of the year, and I was really proud of a lot of my teammates and, and, and just proud of the hey. defense as a unit especially. For complete Cavalier sports coverage, watch VirginiaSportsTV.com. I watch VirginiaSportsTV.com. When Bart's surfing the web, he goes to www.VirginiaSportsTV.com. If you love Cavalier football, then check out VirginiaSportsTV.com so you can get a better look at me and some of my teammates. For exclusive all-access video of Virginia football, visit virginiasports.com and look for the links to virginiasportstv.com. Coming up next. It's a 200-acre farm, and uh, this is it. You know senior Brennan Schmidt as a four-year starter on the defensive line, a two-year captain, and an overachieving player whose motor is constantly running. 
We wanted to find out what keeps Brennan's motor going so fast. So we paid a visit to his family's farm in southeastern Maryland. My teammate Spinney is your Student Athlete of the Week. The Student Athlete of the Week is presented by the Virginia Lottery. This past year alone, the Virginia Lottery contributed a record $408 million to public schools throughout the Commonwealth. Hi, my name is Brennan Schmidt. I'm number 96. Play for the Virginia Cavaliers. Left defensive end. Hit, grab, sack. Brennan Schmidt will get the sack. He will. Um, we're here in uh, Southern Maryland in, in Park Hall at uh, my house. It's a 200 acre farm, and uh, this is it. Uh, the house was built in 1654. I'm not sure the entire history of the house, but uh, I think in the uh, 20s, around pro Prohibition, uh, the owner of the house, uh, this guy bought it who I think was a bootlegger and um, who had just come into a lot of money and he bought it and made it basically into, uh, you know, if you can think of uh, the Great Gatsby house and just had his own barns and um, made the house real nice and I think in 1979 his kids sold us this section of the farm and by the time we got it I think this house was pretty run down and um, we fixed it up ever since. Well, this is the upstairs, and um, this is uh, my sister Laura's room. Another history about the house is that back in the day, they had these hinges called heaven and hell hinges. And what they believed was, you know, when someone died in a the room, they'd carry them down on the door. And um, they believed that that's where they decided to go to heaven or hell, was on the door. Having a place that was a part of history and is so old is, is definitely a lot of fun. It's just a place that's been here for so long. And, you know, we've only been here for 35 years, but so much has gone on here before that. And um, it's just, it's a really nice place to have and to uh, enjoy and to take care of. It's very important. Anybody who comes to our home is welcome. And we treat them all as, as the, the, the best guest we've ever had. And, uh, this is the Lord's house, and we, we happen to be using it. Here's a good picture of me and my brother, J.D. We're very close. He just got married last weekend. He's definitely my best friend. Each girl in the family gets her own room, and then they just kind of throw all the boys in this room. This is what we call the bunk room. This is where all the boys sleep. Each girl gets a nice little room, we get this. But we love it. Favorite position when I was a kid was playing center. I gladly played it. No one else really wanted to play it, but I figured I got to touch the ball every play. Brennan is the youngest of six sons, and I'm proud of every one of them. I think Brennan in particular is, is one of those unique personalities that uh, you've got to love him. And uh, his energy level has always been something I've so appreciated. I tell people he's his, his motor stuck on 7,000 RPMs, and I think that's what I appreciate so much about him, that he never gives up, that he really feels the, the intensity to go always as if it's the last play he's ever going to play. Uh, I can tell you that even back in Pee Wee football, uh, Brennan was taking Ridlin for attention deficit. And, uh, we were riding to one of his games, and one of my close friends who was a former Green Bay Packer, Jerry Kramer, was with me, and Brennan taps me on the shoulder and says, Dad, don't give me my Ritalin today. And I said, what's the problem? He said, I want to really be crazy out there today. Another cool part of the house is that uh, this is actually original um, from 1654 when the house was built, and this was actually the outside of the house brother JD and I actually had a um, in high school a, a commercial crabbing business that we started um, I think we had like 350 traps commercial license our own boat went out into the Chesapeake and we were, were watermen for about two summers <laughs> these this is bear and uh, there's another one that is uh, named Brutus 
and we breed them. They're Burmese Mountain Dogs, and uh, this is actually their first litter of uh, nine puppies, and uh, we're selling them and may keep a few. A lot of those things that I've done around here, you know, maintaining this farm with my brothers, and, you know, it takes hard work, and it's not fun all the time, and I was kind of, it's kind of made me learn to, to love to work, I think so. Just growing up here and, and like, you know, been like, oh, Dad, you want me to do this, do that. But really, I've, it's made me learn to love it and to, to, learn, to love labor and not just, um, not just homework and stuff like that, but, you know, hard labor where you're sweating out in the sun. It's enjoyable. Thank you for uh, joining me on a tour of our family's uh, farm. I hope you enjoy it as uh, much as I do. Thank you for coming. Over the summer, legendary coach George Welsh was enshrined into the College Football Hall of Fame. From 1982 to 2000, Welsh guided the Hoos to their first bowl appearance and their first ACC championship. At the time of his retirement, he had become the winningest coach in ACC history. George Welsh is this week's focus for Who's Heating Up. Who's Heating Up is brought to you by Propane Exceptional Energy. Force. Oh, Mikowski pitches. Petty. I think the big turning point was in 1984 team. Because when I came here, we could not recruit in the state. We had a bad reputation. The facilities weren't very good. In fact, there was a lot of neg negative feelings about the Virginia football program in the state. And if you can't recruit in your home state, you've got problems down the line. So, but 84 changed the perception of us as a, as a team and showed that we could win. We beat Virginia Tech and we upset. Uh, well, we upset Virginia Tech, but plus we also beat uh, West Virginia. We had a really good team that year, and had, they had just beaten Penn State. And uh, so the 84 season was basically the, the, the turning point for us. You see the names that I remember growing up and remember the, you know, the, the coaches that I, that I idol, not idolized, but that I respected so much through the years and all the great players see them in there and then I'm going to be part of that that's that's something special I, I have to admit once that lead step and a skid right up over the tackle till you get the ball here and then you got to make it tough. I still love the game uh, I really do I think it's a, it's it's one of the greatest games on, on on the face of the earth and I think it does a lot for even the guys you don't read about going to the NFL it does a lot for them and as far as growing up and especially if they get when they get an education and graduate Coach, congratulations, man. Congratulations, man. <laughs> Find out why more people are choosing clean, safe, reliable propane. Visit usepropane.com. Propane, exceptional energy. I'm Michael Johnson, and Cavalier Sports Weekly will be right back. Welcome back to the show. Many of our Olympic sports teams have been competing since the end of August. The women's soccer team has played three games so far, and they're our feature for our Olympic Sports Spotlight. The Olympic Sports Spotlight is presented by the Virginia Athletics Foundation. Every time we come to JMU, it's, it's usually the same game. It's a 1-0 game, a 2-1 game. Um, they usually uh, keep the defense pretty packed in, and uh, we knew that we had to be patient and move the ball around. And at the end of the game, it started just getting crazy, and it came down to who wanted to get the extra effort and do the little things to win. I thought they did a really good job. I think it made it difficult for us. Uh, I, I was pleased with the way we kind of did grind this one out. You know, it's always been a tough game when we come up to James Madison, and uh, we didn't expect anything other than this. I, 
I don't think we've played our best yet, but to, to not play our best and get three results against these kind of teams um, says a lot. So I think we just have to get back to the training table now and, and uh, work on some things and see if we can't get ourselves a little bit better because we, we need to going down um, to Penn State and obviously with the game, the other games coming up. Thanks for watching Cavalier Sports Weekly. I get some time off next week, but be sure to watch the show as we give you a behind the scenes look of the making of Cavman and get our kicks with standout place kicker Connor Hughes. Until next time, go Hoos! Cavalier Sports Weekly is presented by the Virginia Lottery, where all profits benefit Virginia's public schools grades K-12. through Buy clean, safe, reliable propane. Propane, exceptional energy. And brought to you in part by the Virginia Athletics Foundation, dedicated to providing scholarship, operational, and facility support for the Virginia Athletics Program.